Good morning, and welcome to today's reflection from Christ Church. I'm actually recording this at the end of Remembrance Sunday, a day full of poignant reminders of sacrifice, of loss, of grief. On Friday, Christ Church School held their remembrance service in church, and that too was incredibly moving. From the wonderful charcoal drawings that Year 6 had created, which you can still see in church at the moment, to the incredible poems that had been written. And the reminder from Graham Naylor Smith that remembrance was more than a formal ceremony. It becomes real as we look at and engage with the stories of real people. The story was shared of the Canadian doctor John McRae, who in 1915 was inspired to write the poem in Flanders Fields after presiding over the funeral of a friend and fellow soldier, Lieutenant Alexis Helmer, who died in the Second Battle of Ypres. It's a poem that speaks of sacrifice, but also serves as a command to the living to press on. Remembrance Day. But the word remembrance has a much deeper meaning as far as I'm concerned. I became a Christian at university. And one of the first steps I took in my journey after I'd accepted Jesus as Saviour was when our college chaplain, a man called Keith Sutton, he later became Bishop of Litchfield, invited me to a communion service. Now, I didn't know much about church traditions or rituals, but somewhere in my head I thought you that you couldn't take communion unless you had been processed, that is, confirmed, in some way. I really didn't know very much. However, Keith said, no, 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 you can come whether you've been confirmed or not. The general content of what he said was, you should come because it's important for you to see that a communion service is not some form of mystic ritual for a select few. It is a joyous celebration of what it means to be a Christian, and it is for all who love the Lord. Well, that is about 55 years ago now, so I don't guarantee that those were the exact words, but I do know that he was correct. Attending that first communion service opened my eyes to another dimension of faith. And the words that did that were those that were read from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 25. Paul wrote, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Not just a reminder of a meal, but a reminder of his sacrifice for us. And more than a reminder of the gospel of life, it also a command to share that knowledge, that truth, that gospel, as the practice of a Thanksgiving memorial meal is shared together by believers. We are remembering someone real. We are remembering the one who changed and changes now everything. 55 years on, those words still have the power to make me think. Every time there is a communion service, it is a remembrance day. But actually it needs to be even more than that. Every day, with or without a communion service, needs to be a remembrance day remembering christ's love sacrifice and victory and every day we should want to be witnesses for the truth of that love as we have the most significant event ever to remember 
Let's pray. Father God, help us to remember, to remember each and every hour of each and every day what you have done for us. Help us, Lord, to live our lives conditioned by your love, your grace, your mercy, lives led by the Holy Spirit in us, lives that show that we are living in remembrance of you. Help us, Lord, to show and share your love to others, that they might also come to know you as Lord and Saviour. Amen. The song I've chosen to go with today's reflection is one called In Remembrance of Me by Cherry Kigi. Have a great week. God bless. <laughs>